Welcome to All Hands call for 10th of February 2020. Um, we will be talking this week about robonomics. And we got a guest, Vadim Manenko, who I hope I pronounced that pretty well. If not, please uh, fix me up. Uh, well, we are pleased to have you here, Vadim. And uh, please tell us about robonomics and how you are using IPFS and the P2P in your product. Okay, thank you. And hello, everyone. I'm Vadim Manenko, and um, uh, I've been working in AeroLab for two and a half years now. And today I'd like you to share my experience and what Robonomics is and mainly how we use IPFS. So, okay, basically let's start from a small, a small introduction, a small history of our project. Um, the main team started to do some experiments with uh, peering technologies back to 2015. And at that time they tried to launch a drone by setting a transaction in Ethereum blockchain and they succeeded actually. So it was really good. After a few more um, examples, after a few more experiments, in 2017, we got funded on ICO and we started to focus mainly on the Robonomics protocol, which I will um, tell you about today. But First of all, I have to warn you, uh, Robonomics is uh, quite a huge topic to discuss in 20 minutes. So I'll mostly focus on the, on the IPFS part, right? And uh, um, let me start from how we came up with the idea of Robonomics. Uh, we, for example, me, I'm still a student. I'm a PhD student in at my university and I see a lot of people studying engineer robotics, computer science, etc. And most of the engineers, when it comes to building um, a project with a robot, with a drone or sensors, etc. Uh, most of the time we use ROS. Probably you, you may have known this framework. It stands for a robotic operating system. And it's a huge framework, which is, uh, which has a huge community, a lot of packages to control um, wheels, uh, manipulate your drone to get the data from different type of sensors, etc. And from one hand, we have this uh, a huge amount of people who are engineers who work with robots. And from the other hand, we have a new technologies like Web3, uh, distributed file system, blockchain, etc. And we thought that we could combine them and we could uh, build some kind of a communication protocol for those people to make it easier to, for engineers to develop applications which would be completely autonomous and uh, it would be really easy to connect your project, your robotic project to new internet, to Web3. So, uh, as I have mentioned, for the last two and a half years, uh, we're developing this kind of uh, link between ROS users and um, Web3 communication protocols. If it's possible, I would like to share the screen and show you a few, like a demo. And from this demo on, I will explain how it works and where we use it actually. It's our main DAPP, it's dapp.robonomics.com. Here you can see some statistics and on the left side, you can find services. On these services, I will show you this demo. It's called Future Weather. It's pretty simple, but it explains some basic things about uh, IPFS usage in our protocol. All it has is just a single button. So I click it and the uh, MetaMask window popped up. So it asked me to sign a message and it's not a transaction. It actually uh, how Robonomics works. So I have to sign every type of message I broadcast to the network with my private key. 
so I could be identified and it could be secured. And now I'm waiting for the result. Here we go. And what uh, what you can see? Let's start from the URL bar, and here you uh, you can see IPFS hash, which describes uh, a type of service. In terms of Robonomics network, we have uh, different services, and to distinguish one from another, we assign them an IPFS uh, hash, which is unique for a particular service. Also, it has an Ethereum address. It's uh, its purpose to uh, tell the difference between the results we get from the network. And uh, it's really important for you to understand that we don't have uh, a particular endpoint for a service since it's just peer-to-peer uh, -peer communication and we don't have an IP address uh, or a port or something. Uh, there is no names. There is just an identifier in the network and we broadcast the message which will be del delivered to all the services in the network and only the service with the same uh, with the same uh, IPFS hash would be able to reply on our service. In this demonstration it's really simple and all it does is just uh, records the weather on the Fuji mountain and um, sends it back as a JSON encoded string. But it's just a small amount of um, ergonomics potential. So basically we, we, we found a way to connect a sensor, which is, let's say, on the Fuji mountain or somewhere else. And we connect this sensor to a distributed network and it doesn't uh, it's not necessary to have a specific endpoint and it just could reply on, on the message based on the IPFS hash model. So another thing I would like you to show is the small scheme. Okay, let's start from this one. You can treat robonomics as a middleman between uh, cyber physical systems such as robots or sensors, uh, etc., and a user with a MetaMask extension. And both of these parts, they have a private and public key. They are able to sign messages and uh, broadcast them in the network. And Robonomics uh, helps to find a way from one to another and to deliver some, let's say, it's called Robonomics as a service, robot as a service, I mean. So in the, in the GitHub, you probably have seen this small scheme. And we have basically two, two layers of our protocol. Uh, first of all, it's, we use ABFS pops up and it's still marked as an experimental feature, but we have been using it for two years and it works quite well. Uh, another layer is blockchain. In this uh, example, it's Ethereum, but it's not necessary. Uh, could be Ethereum, it could be uh, Polkadot or something else. Uh, why, we, uh, different, uh, why we split those layers in IPFS and Ethereum? Uh, the purpose of this is uh, it could not be possible to have all the communication between different services in uh, just a blockchain. It costs a lot. Writing something in a blockchain costs you really a lot. And we decided to move all those negotiations and all those communication in IPFF, IPFS pops up channels. Meanwhile, keeping in a blockchain only the necessary part like when we have a deal, for example, between two parts, we write everything down in blockchain and then we proceed communicating in the IPFS. In the previous example of Fuji weather, I showed you, we didn't have all of these parts. We had only a demand message and a result. You can treat it as, uh, I want some service to be done and 
I go to public distributed network and I just ask for it. I don't care how it works and I don't care where it leaves. I just broadcast a message where I say, okay, I need the weather on the Fuji mountain. And someone in the network who always listens to the channel and is able to reply for a specific model for a specific IPFS hash finds my message and replies back with the result message. So in this example, they were involved only this part, the map message and the result. But if we consider a more, um, a more real life example, real life scenario, you would see that when I ask for a service, someone would reply with an offer and it would involve some uh, negotiation about the task, what should be done, about the money, how much it, it would cost, and some uh, other description of the some other parameters. And in this scenario, we would have a demand message from my side, for example, an offer message from a service side. There is a specific role in our network, which is called provider, and all it does is looks for a corresponding demand and offer messages. And when it finds ones, it creates a liability smart contract and writes down all the uh, necessary information about the task. So in the future, it could not be uh, changed. So it makes immutable for all the parts. Then the agent would perform the task and broadcast the result message. And I get my result and the agent gets, gets its fee for example. So I hope you got the main idea at this moment. Uh, I will briefly um, make you look at the messages specification and then I will let you ask my, my questions. So in the Robonomics Network there are three main types of messages. It's a demand message, offer message and a result. Uh, as I mentioned previously, every service has a unique identifier, it's a model. Uh, then if we need to pass some dynamic additional parameters, we uh, define them in an objective. If the service is not for free, we define a token. It's basically an ERC20 uh, address in Ethereum blockchain. And the amount of these tokens, Lighthouse is, um, namespace for a service and uh, in terms of IPFS, it's basically in IPFS pops up channel. If we are willing someone to participate in validating the result from the agent, we can hire uh, a third party who would be our validator. We specify an Ethereum address and validator fee. The deadline is pretty obvious, I think. Nonce is for security reason. The sender is for uh, my public Ethereum address and the signature is the thing, signature. The offer message is pretty much the same except um, Lighthouse fee instead of validator fee. And the result is much smaller. It has the result field, which contains a PFS hash of the result file. Uh, if it was with the liability uh, involved it has a liability address, success, true or false, and a signature of the agent. Uh, those messages are JSON encoded and transferred via IPFS pops up channels. Briefly, that's uh, basically that's basically it I want to say. So if you have any question, Uh, qu uh, qu any questions to specifically this uh, part or overall? Uh, are we moving overall, the... uh, at, at anything. It may be easier if you stop sharing, <laughs> then we can like see folks' faces. Uh, okay, just uh, stop. Okay, got it. All right. Uh, anyone got any questions? 
I got mine. Okay, Johnny, you are first. Go on. Um, I suppose, how do you determine um, the semantics? So this messaging protocol is, seems to be very specific uh, to your use case with robotics and everyone has to speak the same messaging protocol. So how do you imagine the semantics for this platform? Um, you mean, it's, uh, it's uh, just a standard for robonomic communication protocol, but then every uh, every single service defines the way it works by itself. So basically, if you're willing to connect a service to a robonomics protocol, you need to teach the service uh, speak those messages, and then you... gotcha. Yeah, so you need to basically speak robono ro robonomics protocol. Yeah, yeah gotcha. Robonomics. Okay. I got a question. Uh, are you using like? I, I imagine you have like a reference client or like a reference implementation of Urbanomics. Are you using uh, Go IPFS or JS IPFS, or are you like mixing them? Um, both of them. Uh, basically, we have um, an Aira. It's a client for. It's our client for Urbanomics network, and um, basically, it's just a virtual machine and. It's uh, shipped with a, a Go IPFS, but on the DAPP side, we use a JS IPFS. Actually, there is a problem uh, connecting them together because uh, Go IPFS nodes are hidden from JS IPFS nodes, and we needed to make a bridge between them. We need to allocate another service which would connect those nodes between. Yeah, hopefully. It will improve this year. <laughs> we, we hope to. Yeah. Uh, I got another question from myself. Um, uh, what uh, What's the identity behind, like, how do you create this uh, PubSub channel name? Is it like the identity of the service that, like, uh, having the sensor attached, or is it like? Uh some uh, No, about uh, pub channels. Uh, we have a lighthouse uh, smart contract which uh, holds all the records of the IPFS pub channels and it's uh, human readable. So, for example, the main one is iralab.lighthouse.5.robonomics.eth. And if you would like to define a new one, you need to send a you send a transaction to a smart contract and to create a new channel which would be written in the Ethereum blockchain. But for example, for uh, model field, you can define it as you want. It just should be it must be unique for, for your service. That's it. You can just get a hash from uh, some file in your in your uh, service or anything. So IPFS channel is defined in the smart contract, which lives in the Ethereum network and model identifier is, is on you. Cool. Uh, I'm looking at everyone's faces uh, and the remaining questions. Uh, raise your hand or ask on the chat. I understand there are a lot of information right now, but as I told previously, Robonomics is not like for just 20 minutes. Uh, we have a wiki, we have YouTube channel, Twitter, Riot, and everything. So if you are willing to try our services or get more familiar with how it works, you are welcome to ask me anywhere in any channel. In I got a like the final question for me. Uh, what would be 
like the simplest use case for or an example of use of robonomics if you would like to like explain like a sample sa sample use case for for it what could you build on top of uh, the simplest one if we get rid of this blockchain part the simplest part is um, just to use it to get data without a specific endpoint we have for example a sensor which um, checks air quality and all i need to do is to set this sensor uh, get raspberry pi for example connected to a network and i can get the data all over the world without any domains or without a specific ip address etc i just need to know this ipfs model hash that's basically it uh, we use ipv6 addressing so it's really simple for us to connect a huge bunch of sensors without warning that we need to define a specific port or a specific ip address for every of them uh, if we involve um, this blockchain part we have for example we can issue a digital identity for something for example for a drone we can uh, sign up and issue an identity for your drone for your sensor for everything or for example you can hire some i don't know you can hire a drone to deliver something it's still under construction but you can pay a small amount of tokens for a drone that would catch your catch your message and perform the task that's a good example actually uh, all right, I've run out of questions. Any ad hoc final questions before we leave our guests? All right, Vadim, thank you so much for joining us this week. It was really cool. Uh, and I'll, maybe kind of unexpected use of uh, IPFS pops up, especially given you've been using it for two years. Um, it will, will for sure follow up on like your pain points and the ways we could improve interop between Go yeah, and JS. that would be great. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, but thank you so much for joining us this week. Um, and PSA from me is, uh, we are not meeting again next week. We are meeting again in two weeks. So stay tuned. Once again, thank you, Vadim, for joining us. And thank you a lot. Thank you. Next one.